Two years ago, Maryam put on the face cover in hopes to become a better Muslim. Well, I basically started about two years ago. It was kind of like I had been thinking about it for a while, about like a year, and I just hadn't made the decision. Like when I was younger, we were in Pakistan for a while, and I kind of, when I was there, I kind of had to wear it because it was more cultural than anything, and I didn't really understand why. Um, when I came back here, I obviously took it off. I didn't wear it at all. And um, just into, I guess, my third, second year of university, I started learning more about Islam. I, was, I started becoming, um, I guess, more practicing, more curious. I learned more, and I wanted to implement more of what I learned. The niqab refers to the piece of cloth which covers the face. Women who wear it usually cover everything including their hands. They believe it's required in Islam for modesty. It helps them focus on improving their personalities over their physical appearances. And this is how Maryam feels. From my opinion, it's about modesty, it's about dignity. It's the way I see it, God has created us with a dignity and it's our responsibility to uphold it. And like covering your face is, I guess people can talk about like, oh my God, you don't have to, and it's just your face and all this stuff. But for me, it's like, it gives me more respect. Like personally, in my experience, I don't have people, like I don't have, for example, guys coming up to me and being like, trying to hit on me or whistle at me or make remarks and that gives me respect. But clothing adopted by Muslim women has for long been criticized and challenged in the West. Some of these challenges come from within the Muslim community itself. Farzana Hassan is a member of the Muslim Canadian Congress. She describes herself as a progressive Muslim and opposes some of the practices adopted by a few Muslims whom she calls the conservatives. I've written a book on uh, Islam and women, uh, so I have done a bit of research and I've never claimed to be a Muslim scholar. However, uh, I base my opinions on certain Quranic injunctions that in my opinion are extremely ambiguous on the topic. Uh, they are basically generalizations about modesty. For example, the Quran says that, well, you know, tell the Muslim women to lower their gaze. You know, modesty can be expressed in a number of ways, uh, depending on your your cultural uh, taboos and mores and and so forth i mean it, it, the, the quran doesn't specify the kind of attire that you're supposed to wear and and i think that's the one thing that um, muslim women need to re-examine for themselves and, and not just take uh, everything that they are told from 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 the clergy from the conservative scholars uh, about uh, how it, how it is that they're supposed to express their modesty Tarek Farah, who also belongs to the Muslim Canadian Congress, holds similar views. Not a shred of evidence. There's not a single line in the Quran. The Quran is explicit that Muslim women should cover their breasts. That's it. It doesn't say cover your hair. It doesn't say cover your face. History will render a very harsh verdict on these women who in Canada were promoting the subjugation of fellow women in the name of Islam. Neither Khadija covered her face, nor Fatima covered her face, nor Aisha covered her face. And these women are? The wives of the Prophet. There are certainly uh, two opinions on uh, uh, the issue of niqab, which is uh, one is uh, it's, uh, mandatory and the other one is optional. They both have their proof when it comes to prophetic traditions. However, uh, some of them have more authentic than others, but we say uh, sometimes uh, we have to make a decision based on the, uh, the times 
the atmosphere, the environment, and the conditions given. Some of the scholars says actually in North America it is preferred not to wear the niqab because uh, uh, we have a stigma already here and people are not uh, very approachable or we're not approachable to others. So it's a matter of convenience. But again, if the sister decides to wear the uh, niqab, all the power to her, we will support her 100%. But to Maryam, it doesn't really matter whether niqab is a requirement in Islam. For her, the niqab is one way to strengthen her relationship with God. For me, it was a very personal choice. Like, for me, it wasn't that... I know there's like, people think, okay, well, it's obligatory, or you have to do it, or you don't have to do it, and there's that whole debate. But for me, it wasn't about whether I had to do it, or it was like obligatory. For me, it was kind of like that next step that I knew that I needed to take. In some countries, women don't have a choice. In Canada, that's not the case. And a controversial issue is how the niqab fits within Canadian culture. Catherine Bullock is a Muslim convert and author of a book about veiled women in the West. She says that there are many negative stereotypes associated with the veil, which make people think it's a harm to their culture. There are people who think that to see a face veil is a harm to Canadian culture. Because of the way it's symbolized as woman's subordination, they think that to see that dress is a symbol of women's inequality growing and creeping into a country that's fought for women's equality rights. And they feel very uh, distressed by that because they feel that they've worked hard for equality and here are these women bringing back inequality. I, I don't think it's a valid concern. I think that Muslim women who do that are, you know, they're really motivated by different things and they have different conceptions of their place in the universe and the meaning of life. And I mean, I know there are some women who are forced to wear it in Muslim majority countries and I hope we're not speaking about that. We're speaking about in Canada, she has the choice to wear it or not and she just chooses to wear it without any pressure or anything. People who look at them and say that they're bringing the inequality or the harm are coming, are speaking from a different place. For Miriam, the niqab is an expression of her worldview. It may not be popular, but this certainly doesn't make it any less valid. I think that, honestly, that's just values. It's a difference of values. I feel more feminine the way I'm dressed. I feel like I'm protecting myself because that's what I need to do. Just because, like, just because society says that you need to, you know, show off your body and be all sexual and all that kind of stuff, doesn't mean that that's what defines me as a female. Just, like, that's the way society sees it, that's not the way I see it. I mean, like, I don't think it's a trait of femininity to have to uncover yourself and show yourself off to the world and flaunt yourself and be sexually promiscuous. Nada has been wearing the niqab longer than Maryam. She put it on seven years ago. She says that the media are guilty of perpetuating negative stigmas to the niqab. I think just the fact that something new comes, you always don't know about it. It's something so new, it must be something weird. And media has a huge effect, you know, you're constantly showing the Taliban in Afghanistan and you're showing them as really harsh people and what they've done. There's articles all after articles about from one perspective, you know, where it's always talking about bashing the niqab, bashing the niqab. And so a person who's reading that and who's watching such things on TV and on CNN and wherever else and sees it, the same niqabi, the same person, and they see it on walking on the street, of course they will have that kind of stereotype and they will treat that person likewise. And I think really if we just take away the, the niqab idea I mean, from the televisions and from the media and let people first-hand experience it, it will be very much different. This concerns Miriam too. The worst thing that's ever happened to me is I was crossing the street and had someone crossing the other way and he saw me and passed by and then like turned around and made a comment. He yelled out, he's like, oh, what's up with the Taliban? And then he sweared it, like he swore. And for me, it was kind of like amusing and interesting. 
I think that all just comes from like, these days you see Afghanistan, you see the Taliban, that's all that is in the media. It's just, again, that lack of understanding. People don't know what it is. That's what they associate with it. That's what they don't understand. So I was in the highway and I was driving and I looked over to my left side and I saw a man driving right beside me and he took out I mean, with him, he just gestured with his hand um, a gun and pretended to, uh, you know, as if he shot me like, you know, like this or something. And, and I remember I was very scared because his face was full of hate, like so much hate. Even though it wasn't a real gun, it was just a gesture from his hand. Just the fact that what if he had a real one, would he have thought of doing that just because I wore the whale? And um, I was very, um, like I was very uncomfortable after that. And um, yeah, that was probably like my one of the worst ones. But other than that, maybe somebody will look at me while I'm stopped at a stop sign or anything, but nothing major. To be seen as part of the Taliban is just one of the many stereotypes associated with wearing the niqab. Oppression is another one, which is not the case for Muslim women in Canada. People think you're forced to do it and they just don't understand why somebody would want to cover themselves or like how we can live without wearing like tight clothes and showing off our figure and showing off our face. And, and I guess it's just like they think we have to do it and our religion forces us to do it or our parents force us to do it. and they just feel bad for us, I guess. And it's it's totally the opposite. Like, like I told you, I'm more comfortable this way. I feel better. Um, I wasn't forced at all. It was my own decision. And I just, I guess it's that understanding. Like I, if I were to be forced not to wear it, if I had to wear, you know, take off my hijab, take off my niqab, wear tight-fitting clothes or whatever, show off my body, I would feel extremely uncomfortable. I don't think the stigma has been connected so much to the face veil itself as just to any Muslim in a scarf, even with her face showing. There's a way in which the scarf itself erases the face, even though the face is showing. So the stereotypes are that the Muslim woman is oppressed, that she's submissive, that she's subordinate, that she must be silent, that she's controlled by the men in her family, that her culture doesn't value her highly. And I think that that just applies to any Muslim woman, whether or not she's got the face veil or not. Some progressive Muslims, including Hassan, says that the women who willingly wear the niqab are still oppressed because the face veil is a byproduct of social pressure. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, uh, many a times Muslim women are being pressured into these things. I know that uh, some of them do uh, adopt the veil, so to say, out of their own vol volition. But even that I would question because if you're only fed a certain narrative, if you're only told that, yes, this is a religious injunction, uh, and, and, and if you're not presented with an alternative discourse on this, saying that, no, it isn't, then your choice is not really genuine. And so their human rights, I think, are being violated. But the question is, are these women stepping on other people's rights? Alia Hagban is the director of the Canadian Council of Muslim Women, and she believes that niqab sends out negative messages to Canadian society. I think, um, uh, I think for Canadians, showing the face is an important element of who that person is and the identity of the person. I think it's not just Canadians, I think anywhere in the world. The face expresses ourselves, our identity, our personality. So when, uh, when somebody sees the face being covered, then it's, why are you hiding? What is it you're hiding? You know, what, so the message is not a positive one. Bullock, who had been researching the Muslim veil for many years, refuses to consider the veil as a threat to others. I, I don't believe society has the right to see anybody, any body part at all. Uh, I don't think that people have a right to see my face at all. Um, I think that secular democracy says that you can choose to live your life as you wish, as long as you're not harming others. I don't see any evidence that a face veil harms anyone. It's, it's, a, it's just a piece of cloth. It's just covering somebody's face. It doesn't reach out and slap anyone. 
A person who you don't know is as much as a security threat to you as a person who's like covering their face. Just be like, if you don't know them, you can't trust them, right? And that's a security issue. If I go, like, like I said, like, there's security issues at the border, you can see my face. Um, if you need to identify me for, I don't know, like a witness in court, for example, you can see my face. Um, if you need to see my license while I'm driving, I'll take off my thing and you can see that I'm the same person. Like, in terms of robberies or whatever, people walking with masks, uh, masks on, anybody could cover their face and go and like, I think it's just naive to say that. Like you, it's, I personally think people use that as an excuse. And if you really think about it, it's, it's really not that big of an issue. Nara and Miriam have no problem taking their naqaba for identification purposes. They say that many women who cover their face hold similar attitudes. Some Muslim scholars even think that unveiling the face is a requirement in certain situations. If there is a security breach or what happened in the trial, that there's somebody's life on, online, we say yes, uh, necessity allows for that what is not permissible. So under these circumstances and conditions, it is allowed to uncover the face if the woman is actually wearing a niqab. However, to force them uh, or to pass a law not to allow women to wear niqab, period, I say it's really unfair because if that's the case, should they then pass a law for a woman or force women not to wear bikinis or not to walk around in the streets uh, uncovering certain areas or not in a, in a decent way. So if a woman decides to do so, this is a free country, as women are free to wear whatever they want, women should also be in the up and down on that issue, should be fair enough a statement to make that, st to make that decision on their own. But some believe freedoms have limits. I think that this is Canada, and there's a charter of rights, you're quite right, and we do have a lot of freedoms, various freedoms in it. I think the thing that I would say is that freedom, all these rights are limited in some way or another. None of us have the freedom of expression. That means we can say anything or anything, that's why we have hate laws and so on. Every freedom has some limitations. I think that religious freedoms have a place in society. In pluralistic society, religious freedoms do have a place and I have always endorsed religious freedoms. However, religious freedoms have to be seen in totality. They have to be viewed holistically. Um, they have to be seen in the context of human rights. And if religious freedoms are violating certain human rights, then the religious freedoms have to go. Who are you to tell me it's my right and your right? It is your right to be not, uh, not harmed by me, uh, to be left alone to worship God in your own ways, to sing the blues, to have cable TV. It's your right. It is your right. But it's not your right to, have, to put any restrictions on me, for example. I don't tell you what to wear. I don't tell you what to do. I don't tell you what to say. I expect the same from you. Don't tell me how to worship God. Don't tell me how to live my life. And certainly don't tell me how to, uh, to practice my religion. Despite all the existing debates, how do average Canadians really feel about the face cover? Here's a sample from downtown Toronto, where we showed some people a picture of a woman in a naqab. We want to ask you, do you know what this woman is wearing? Uh, is it a burqa? I'm not entirely sure the exact specific reason why she's wearing it. I mean, I imagine there are a number of them. Religious connotation, social connotation. I, I don't know specifically. Uh, I think it's something related to her religion. It's a religious thing. What religion? I don't know, Muslim? Or, am I wrong? She could be from any of the Islamic countries, Iran, Iraq, any of those. Pakistan. Afghanistan, maybe, or somewhere like that. I don't know, maybe Saudi Arabia? Do I think anything when I see them? No. No, no I just think that they're, for whatever reason, are wearing that, and who am I to think one way or the other. I don't know, I guess I wonder, uh, um, is it, uh, first of all, is it, uh, is it part of the religion? You know, is it a form of uh, obedience to, a, to some, some god or higher power that they believe in, a sign of respect? Or is it, uh, or is it, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it uh, uh, something that they're forced to do? Um, I think 
it's like she's in prison, but she, you know, still can walk around and act like a slave because it's like you can't really like be yourself if you don't show like yourself to people, right? Because showing yourself is part of like who you are. It should be something that's socially encouraged, but I don't think you can pass a law against something like that and force people to stop wearing it because maybe for them it has something to do with their traditional identity that they don't want to let go of and it means something to them. I think if it's part of their religion and they as women feel that they'd like to be dressed that way and that they are comfortable with that, then they should do what they'd like. It's a multicultural city and I think everyone should do what they'd like. So as long as she's comfortable with it, I am. I think uh, that our, our, our country, our society is based, based on freedom of choice because we all have a choice to do whatever whatever we want to within, like you said, within the law. A big believer in people doing what they want to do. If you decide that's your fashion statement, go ahead, like do it because you want it or you don't want to show your face because you would rather preserve yourself for whatever reason, like it's okay as long as you're not being forced to do it. Although sometimes Netta feels a bit isolated, she says she will continue to work hard to get her story out there. My greatest concern is just trying to find work after I finish my degree. Um, that would be hard because even right now I'm trying to get work experience, but I'm even just hesitant to apply because everywhere you can't cover your face. I, I think I'm, I'm just trying to be out there more. You know, go hand in resumes at places I know I'm going to get rejected at, but at these, you know, make myself more forward, um, to participate as, as in many organizations that I can, the, you know, any human rights organization or anything of that sort, uh, to come out with these speeches and to do these kind of interviews or anything where I can talk about it so people are educated about it before it reaches a point where it would you know, lead to a ban or anything of that sort. As for Maryam, she's now worried about her future as a Naqabi. She believes that as more people get to know niqabis, face covers will be eventually accepted. I hope that in the future there will be increased awareness, increased understanding of what a niqab is. For example, a few years ago, just a few years ago, the hijab was strange to people. Uh, hijab is the head covering. And the more people have started wearing it, the more people have started talking about it, the more discussions there have been, articles, books, everything. And it was strange to people, and now it's normal. Same way the niqab is increasingly becoming common. More people are talking about it, um, more people are writing about it, more people are discussing it. And hopefully I, I actually started compiling a book about women in Islam. And if people get stuff like that out there, then there will be more of an understanding about it, and it will become the same way. This hijab and veil are my strength. I choose to wear them, I choose to cover. I am not forced, I am not oppressed. I cover what you have no right to see. I cover what belongs to me. Like a pearl lays hidden in the depths of a clam, I protect my value. Would you eat a fruit that lay covered in the dirt? I establish my worth. Behind this veil, I unveil the truth. Free of the shackles of the ridiculous standards of sexuality. Is a woman not a woman unless she throws away her dignity? Walks around uncovered for the entire world to see? Is she not oppressed in the ever scrutinizing eye of society? The society that forces her to fret over her beauty. The society that suppresses her true identity. The society that defines her as nothing but a piece of meat. Spending hours in front of the mirror, blaming herself for not being how they want her to be not looking like the airbrushed images they want to see, crying at night because they pressure her to be independent, yet everything she does is dictated by their materialistic, superficial ideology. What independence when her status depends on the men that drool over her? What independence when a blemish destroys her future? What's her life when she must sacrifice self-sustenance, self-sufficiency, self-love? You tell me if I cover myself, I'm throwing away my identity? Giving into independence, giving into dependence and a life of misery? You tell me if I show some skin, I'll finally be free. You tell me if I give in to the norms and pressures that run your empty lives, I will finally be happy? 
What makes you think I'm not happy? What makes you think I lack something in my life because I choose to hide my skin away from you? Do you think that I will be fulfilled if I choose to expose myself to you? Does my happiness lie in your judging eyes? Do I not deserve self-respect and self-love? Why would I throw it away to please you? When I cover up, I am fulfilled. I am complete. I have what I need. I can love and be free, grow to individual maturity. You ask me why I wear this cloth over my head. You ask me why I hide away my beauty. You ask me why I don't expose my identity. You ask me why I choose oppression. You ask me what it's all about. Well, here it goes. It's about protecting my modesty. It's about guarding my dignity. It's about embracing my chastity. It's about being a feminist without compromising my identity. It's about embracing my femininity. It's about being who I was meant to be. It's about salvaging my beauty. It's about asserting my independence. It's about defending my rights. It's about being free. It's about being me.